It's my first time in London. It's my first time at WBF. Usually it's my team who pitches on my behalf because as the title of this presentation says, I am an invisible man. I know that everybody can see me. So let's kick it off. I kind of gave away the title of this picture, but this is not a blockchain cruise. This is not people going to a party. And actually, these are not refugees even. These are people like you in this room, and I bet that some of these guys in the picture, you know them. Because many of them are from the city of London, many of them are British. They were trapped in the island of Lombok past month when the earthquake happened. And they were fleeing for their lives, hanging on to their smartphones, leaving their passports, their IDs, locked into a small safe in a hotel, which we usually all do when we go on vacation. The horrifics that they went through are today matched with 936 million vulnerable people around the world due to climate change. 290 million invisible children under the age of five. They can be victims of sex trafficking and child labor. 68.3 million people, 68.3 million people this year, they got displaced because of war. 7.2 million undocumented people in Britain. And the problem is one, it's identity. And there's one man, an invisible man, with a solution, and that's me. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tay. I'm co-founder of Tycoon.tech. We're innovating in the digital identity space. We're not doing an ICO. This is a company that existed last year with a team of six to eight people. Besides fulfilling my duties and roles as CEO of Tycoon, I'm a global moderator at Bitcoin.com. I have my master's in digital currencies and blockchain technology from the University of Nicosia. The title Invisible People, or the title Invisible, is usually given to individuals who do not have a birth certificate. That's my Dutch driving license. You can come talk to me later and you can check the original one to see that it's really written unbekend or unknown. I was born in Kuwait. In 1990, the Gulf War erupted, and the only document that proves where I was born, my birth certificate was destroyed in the war. So I grew up as an invisible man. And as I mentioned before, 290 million children today share the same experience as me, and we call them the invisible children. I am born in Kuwait, but I'm not Kuwaiti, I'm not rich. My father doesn't own oil wells. I'm born to Syrian parents. My father is Syrian, my mom is Syrian, so I carry the Syrian nationality. And after my work contract expired in the Netherlands, the only option for me to stay in 2014 in the climax of the Syrian war was to apply for asylum. Now notice that I said I lived in the Netherlands before. That means I have still the same we call BSN number or social security number. I still have the same insurance card, yet it took me two years to be identified. From 2014 till 2016, I spent it in refugee camps. I moved between five refugee camps. I traveled 987 kilometers. I carried back home 14 kilograms of paper. And that's not only me, that's 150,000 Syrian refugees in the Netherlands. So the problem is obvious. Weak, outdated identity systems that produce paper-based identities. Moving between five camps 
taught me that interoperability in identity systems as an advanced country as the Netherlands are zero, zero interoperability. And most importantly, GDPR and privacy laws today, they push governments and companies to protect the data of its citizens and of the users in general. If we want to give it a rating, it's also absolute zero. I mean, 400 people living in a hole like this in the Netherlands, and as you can see, the beds are open to all other refugees. Tykin started in the refugee camp of the Netherlands in an area called Zeist in Utrecht, and our mission and our vision is to help NGOs and governments help people better by providing a digital identity platform that brings the resiliency we want to digital identities. Resiliency to fraud and resiliency to permanent loss. The platform is a middleware solution built on the sovereign network, which Tykin is a founding steward of the sovereign network. We were one of the first 10 companies to join sovereign last year. Today we have more than 25 stewards, including IBM, Cisco, MasterCard, and the T-Mobile Labs in Germany. So this company that started last year, today their logo, Tykin's logo, is next to IBM and next to all these big organizations. What we leverage in our solution is something we call DIDs or decentralized identifiers. It's an identity protocol initiated by the W3C institution. And it allows us to have a beneficiary app on our platform that brings more services to refugees and vulnerable people who are held by NGOs. It allows for one-time registration and no need to move between five camps and register five times. And most importantly, it protects the data of the users. Now, if you think refugees do not care for their privacy, you're mistaken. Because we looked at the Facebook pages of Syrian refugees, and we found out that they don't use their real names. Because your name can imply your religion, imply the city you are born from. And the reason they left is being prosecuted due to their religions and due to their political affiliations. So how the app works, it's built on the ANA platform. ANA in Arabic means me. It's a self-sovereign identity solution. On your smartphones, when you download an ANA app or a Red Cross app, or a WFP app, you will be getting a notification from the service provider that he wants to access certain information on your data. Utilizing zero knowledge proofs that do not need 15 minutes to work because we're using Schnorr signatures that have been existing since 30 years. In seconds, we can know whether you are above 18 or under 18, whether you have one child or three children or zero children. At the same time, there is the field worker app that brings accountability for NGOs so that Oxfam problems that happened this year will be prevented with our solution. Efficiency, and simply put, it makes the life of a field worker very easy. And more importantly, and this is what I love about the field worker app, because I volunteered in refugee camps and I could not carry my voluntary work credentials to other organizations and prove that I have done this volunteering work simply because the camp was closed later. So using the ANA platform, volunteers can carry their credentials from one city to another city to another country and prove they have done voluntary work in such areas. And finally, project level metrics are very important for donors to see where has the money been spent, and even for NGOs. 
When you donate, guys, where does your money go? Nobody knows. Now, I am the invisible man. I am the founder of the company. It was based from my personal experience, yet I have a team. I have two co-founders, Jimmy Snook and Khalid Maliki. They are bringing enormous value to Taiken, whether it's in business development or UX and UI respectively. We are a diverse team, as Jimmy said yesterday in the diversity fireside chat. We have one of the most female bright developers in the Netherlands, who is an honor student at the University of Amsterdam. And we have one of the first female Bitcoin adopters in Lebanon, who is also a graduate of the University of Nicosia. And she is quitting her job where she works now to continue her life in cryptocurrencies and to into Bitcoin. Now, usually advisors are used to pump coins and to pump ICOs. And I already thanked Mo in the beginning for bringing me here to WBF for the first time. But Mo did not only open the doors of his network. He opened the doors of his home in Amsterdam, where he invited us as a team continuously to work on our business model and work on our connections. In addition to Daryl O'Donnell, who brings 20 years of experience in emergency work. He used to work for the Canadian Red Cross before. And he is one of the architects of the sovereign network. So we make sure that our identity platform is privacy compliant and we deliver on our promises to our clients. And finally, Marlous Pomp, she has done huge work to bring us into the Dutch government and build the partnerships with the Netherlands Red Cross and many other organizational Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Justice. We have done several sessions with these guys because of Malus. Now, you have seen our roadmap in previous WBFs. And I wanted to point out that, yes, we have won the ICO pitch of 2018, and the award was presented by His Highness Prince Constantine, the Prince of the Netherlands. Yet, we soon figured out that as an incentive model in an ICO, to share data of refugees and vulnerable populations is not the way to go and is not ethical. And we cannot expose NGOs and beneficiaries and vulnerable populations again into fluctuations of cryptocurrencies and coins. Yet, we are self-funded and we have one of our early investors and believers, Alex Van Leeuwe. Alex, can you stand up please so that everybody can see you? So thank you for your kind investments. <laughs> We do believe in the power of cryptocurrencies, and we do believe that the innovation behind tokens can help a company like Tyken and many other companies that are driven by profits. That's why, together with our legal partner from Psychos, Arnab, thank you so much, we are discovering the road and the route of a security token to fund Tyken and further bring the product into the market. So when people tell you that tokens are all about hype, you can give the example of Tyken that we do bring hope to the market. Thank you so much. Thank you.